Welcome to Geometry Class. Today we'll talk about angle bisectors in triangles. Before we do that, let's just review what an angle bisector is. You may remember that an angle consists of two rays, and those rays share a common endpoint, and we call that endpoint the vertex. So we might call this angle A. The bisector is the ray that divides the angle into two congruent angles. So in this case, ray AB would, call, would be called the bisector of angle CAD. So that's what a bisector is. When we talk about an angle bisector and the distance from a particular point to an angle, <clears throat> it's important to note that or remember that the distance from a point to a line is always measured on the perpendicular segment. So if I want to measure the distance from point A to line L, I would always measure it here along the perpendicular segment. I would not measure it over here. That, that's not how we do it. Uh, likewise, I, I wouldn't measure it over here someplace. Uh, again, we always measure along the perpendicular segment. This leads us to the angle bisector theorem. The angle bisector theorem says if a point is on the bisector of an angle, and the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. Let's take a look at that uh, here in this context. I have here angle ABC. And the next thing I'm, I'm going to do is just go ahead and create the angle bisector. And the software will do that for us, although we will ultimately learn how to do that with a compass and a pencil and paper. Um, so we'll just construct the angle bisector. There it is. Notice it's a ray. It goes off to infinity, off to, to the right. And the next thing I'd like to know is I'd, I'd like to have an idea of how far a particular point on this bisector is from these two lines. So the question here, again, is, how far is E from this line AB? How far is E from this point over here BC? And remember that to measure that distance from a point to a line, we always go along the perpendicular segment. Perpendicular segment. So uh, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and construct here the perpendicular line from this point E to this segment BC. And so we'll just go in here and construct a perpendicular line. There it is. Likewise, I'd like to go ahead and construct the perpendicular line from point E to segment BA. And there that is as well. Now, there's a lot going on in here, but just to be sure, we're not really interested in this segment here, this portion of, of the line, nor are we interested in this portion of the line, or in this portion of this line, or this portion. All we're interested in is this segment right in here and this segment right in here. One of the things you may notice is that they, they look to be fairly, fairly congruent. Okay, and that's one of the questions that we have right now, and that's the theorem that we're presenting. With. Are they congruent? The answer is yes. If I move this point E in, you can see that those those segments are still the same length. They they both are the same length no matter where I go. Okay. Likewise, if I move this point A to change the nature of my angle, angle ABC, you can see that those two segments, these segments in here, both adjust accordingly, and and in fact they're they're the same length no matter what I do. So any point on an angle bisector is always equidistant from the sides of the angle. There's a converse to the angle bisector theorem. It says if there is a point in the interior of an angle that is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then it must lie on the angle bisector. Let's just take a quick look at that over here on the margin. <clears throat> suppose we had an angle like this. And suppose further that we had a point. And let's just stipulate that this point is equidistant from the sides. Of course, to measure that distance from the sides, we need perpendicular segments. And let's just say that that's equidistant. If that's the case, then we can be absolutely certain that that point lies on the angle bisector. And you can probably see here in the diagram, if I just go back a little bit and erase these marks here, a quick proof of the converse of the angle bisector theorem. If we know that the, we have a pair of <coughs> sides here, which are actually legs, we're dealing with right triangles here. So we have two sides that are congruent. We have two right triangles, and we also have this hypotenuse that's congruent. By the hypotenuse leg theorem, the triangles must be congruent. And if the triangles are congruent, then by CPCTC, these angles must be congruent. And if those angles are congruent, then we can be sure that that is, in fact, the angle bisector. We can combine the angle bisector theorem and its converse into a biconditional. It reads, a point in the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of the angle, if and only if it is on the angle bisector. 
All right, we are in a context where we've we've been talking about these points of concurrency in the last lesson on, on perpendicular bisectors of sides of triangles. We talked about this idea of concurrency. And now we need to look at our second point of concurrency in triangles. The second point is called the in-center. It is constructed or found um, by looking at the angle bisectors of the vertices of the triangle. So the angle bisectors of the vertices of a triangle are concurrent at a point equidistant from the sides. That point is called the in-center. Also, it's important to note that a circle is inscribed in a triangle when it's the largest circle contained in the triangle. And the in-center is the center of such a circle. Let me just sketch that real quick so we can get an idea of what, what it is on Earth that I'm saying. If we have a triangle, any triangle, there is some circle that can be inscribed that is drawn inside it. The center of that circle is called the in-center. And the question for us is, well, how do we find the in-center? The answer is we simply bisect each of these angles, and that will give us the in-center. Again, it's just a rough sketch. Let's look at the construction of the in-center on paper right now, and then we'll talk about just a couple other things. Now we'll go ahead and construct the in-center. The in-center, remember, is the point of concurrency of the three angle bisectors. So before we construct the in-center, let's just go ahead and take a look at the angle bisector construction. So we'll start with just any random angle, such as this one. And we want to bisect it. We'll open the compass up a little bit. And the first step is to place the point of the compass at the vertex and swing an arc through both sides of the angle. From there, I'll move my compass to the intersection of the first arc and one of the sides, and swing an arc in the area where I anticipate the bisector will come through. Then I'll move to the other intersection with the arc on the other side and cross up that first arc there. Now we can go ahead and connect the vertex to this intersection. And there's our angle bisector. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the construction of the in-center. Construction of the in-center. To start with, I'll just go ahead and, and draw a random triangle in here. go, just a random acute triangle. And to construct the in-center, we just want to bisect one of the vertices at a time, one of these angles at a time. So we'll call this triangle ABC. And I'll go ahead and start with, with angle A. To bisect it, put the point of the compass at A and intersect both of the sides. And then move the compass to those intersections one at a time and swing an arc where we anticipate the bisector will lie. We know it's somewhere in that neighborhood. And we can we connect the vertex with the intersection of those last two arcs. That's a ray, and that ray is the bisector of angle A. Repeat the process at vertex B. Now that arc there is okay, but it's really close to that that original the first bisector that we uh, created. So I'm just going to open up my compass a little bit, just so we can get away from that that line there. That's a little better. And now we'll go ahead and find the angle bisector. There we go. All right, and then connect from B through to the intersection of the last two arcs. Like that. That's our second angle bisector. And now we have one more, just at vertex C. There's one. There's two. We'll move up here. There's one. Two. Okay, and we connect through the vertex like this, and there's our third angle bisector. Right here is our in center. Uh, remember, the thing that makes it an in-center is not simply that it's a point of concurrency inside the triangle. There are four such points of concurrency. The thing that makes that the in-center is the fact that we have bisected each of these three angles. That's why it's an in-center. So if I'm looking to identify the in-center, I'm looking for these, these bisectors. Now, having identified the in-center, we can now 
inscribe a circle inside this triangle. To do that, though, we first have to find the distance from this in center to one of the sides. So I'll find the distance from this in center to AC. And the way that we do that is by constructing the perpendicular line through the in center to that side. So I'll put the point of the compass at the in center. We'll intersect AC on this side. We'll intersect AC on this side. Now you'll notice that I, I missed AC. I was beyond it. That's not a problem. All we need to do is go ahead and extend this side AC with that line. And now we can find that, that I've got these two points that are equidistant from the in center. The next step is to move my compass to one of those intersections and move that over here. And then the second intersection and cross that first one. And now we know that the perpendicular line from the in center to AC passes through this point here. We can line up the straight edge like that. And I'll just draw in this segment right here. Just that segment right there. That's really all we're after. We don't really need the line that continues this way. That is perpendicular, which means that this, we'll call this point D, the distance from the in center to D is, is actually the distance from the in center to this line AC. Now we can take our compass and put it back at the in, in center and we can fix the setting on our compass to that same distance there. And now we can actually inscribe the circle. An inscribed circle should hit each of the three sides in one point. And there we have it. You can see how the circle fits perfectly inside the triangle. And that is an inscribed circle. Its center is at the in center. The in center is found by bisecting each of the three vertices. Let's look at one, one example just to see how an in center can be used practically. Suppose we had a park, a national park perhaps, with the following three roads in it. We had a road that sort of curves up like this. We have another road that sort of curves down like this. And then there is a road that comes across this way. We've got these three roads. I've put names on them. Woods Lane, Forest Road, and Teddy Roosevelt Drive. And the question for us is, if, if they want to build a fire station in between these three roads, suppose there's thousands of acres in there, where would they locate the fire station so that it's the same distance from each of these three roads? They want to be able to get access to these three roads in the same amount of time um, without having to drive around. So where would we locate that fire station? The answer is very simple. We just need to identify a triangle here. And then once we identify the triangle, we need to go ahead and uh, find the in center. So we see this is not a perfect triangle. It would be helpful if we could articulate the triangle a little bit better. So perhaps instead of Forest Road hooking here, we, we can sort of imagine that it goes to a point there. Teddy Roosevelt Drive suffers from a similar situation. We, we need to just sort of straighten it out a little bit like that. So now we have a triangle, and to find the in center, we just bisect the three angles. Well, let's just sketch it. There's the bisector between Woods Lane and Forest Road. Here's the bisector between Teddy Roosevelt Drive and Forest Road. And there's the bisector between Teddy Roosevelt Drive and Woods Lane. And you can see there's a point of concurrency there. That's the in center. That's where they build the fire station because that is the point that is equidistant from all three roads. We've looked at how to construct the in center. We've talked about angle bisectors of angles generally and in the context of triangles. I'd encourage you to work on the constructions a few times on your own. If you have any questions, as always, send me an email.